physics topic we will be studying is kinematics. Kinematics is the description of motion. Just to describe motion, not to explain motion yet. We will learn to describe motion first and then study the why and the how. So, what terms do we use to describe motion of an object? Let's see. I can tell you that a car leaves Washington DC at 5 a.m. for New York City, which is uh, 230 miles away. I can tell you how fast the car travels when it arrives, but just for the purpose of describing this car's motion, I don't have to tell you that it is a 1500 kilogram red Ferrari. In kinematics, we use these terms to describe motion. Position, displacement, distance traveled, velocity, speed, acceleration, and time. Just want to let you know that if you're taking notes, you would want to save this space for later because uh, we're going to fill it up. I will be using other pieces of paper for explanations and examples. We will go over all these terms and talk about whether they are vectors or scalars. Just in case if you don't know what vectors and scalars are, a vector is something that has a magnitude and a direction. A scalar only has a magnitude. For example, if I tell you New York City is 230 miles to the north of Washington DC, this is a vector. It has a magnitude, 230 miles, a number part, and a direction. If I just say New York City is 230 miles away from Washington DC. That would be a scalar because it only has a magnitude, no direction. For the motion part, we're going to start with one-dimensional motion, which means an object moves along a straight line. It does not move out of that line. So for one-dimensional motion, to describe the position of an object, we can conveniently use a x-axis. So use the x-coordinates to describe the position. So for the one-dimensional case, we're going to use x for the position. Here I have an x-axis, and an object is at x equals to 2. What it means is that this object is at a position that is 2 units away from the origin. And since this 2 is the distance to the origin, the standard unit for position would be in meters, because it's a distance. Now, is position a vector? Does the position have a magnitude and direction? Let's see. For this one-dimensional case, this is not the only location that is 2 units away from the origin. There's another one right here, negative 2. At x equals to negative 2, 2 meters, it is also 2 meters away from the origin. But this one is a positive 2, meaning it's 2 meters away from the origin in the positive x direction. That one is 2 meters away from the origin in the negative x direction. So in this particular case, the positive and negative tell you about the direction. The positive means positive x direction. The negative means uh, negative x direction. So position is a vector. So position has a unit of meters and uh, yes, it is a vector. The next one is uh, displacement. Displacement, by definition, it is the change in position. When you write this delta, this Greek letter delta, it means the change in. So this is the change in position. Whenever we're talking about changing something, we're talking about the final value minus the initial value. Okay, let me give you an example. Let's say I had $2 in my pocket this morning, but now I have $10 in my pocket. 
So the change in the amount of money I have in my pocket would be the final value minus the initial value. And that would be 10 minus 2, $8. But if it goes the other way around, I start with 10, end with 2, the change in the amount of money I have would be 2 minus 10 and negative $8. The amount of money I have in my pocket is a scalar. So when I look at the change in this scalar, if I get a positive result, that means uh, the amount of money I have in my pocket has increased. If I get a negative result, that means uh, the amount has decreased. Now let's look at the change in position. Suppose this object starts at x equals to 2 and it moves to x equals to 7. What would the displacement be? The displacement would be the final position minus the initial position, which would be negative 7 minus 2 meters, and that will be negative 9 meters. Displacement is the change in position. Position is a vector, so it carries a direction. So when you look at this uh, change in position, because it comes from a vector, it also has a direction. When we look at the change in a vector, this means uh, it's a uh, the change is 9 meters, the negative tells you about the direction. The change is in the negative x direction. If you look at the distance traveled, then that's a different thing. The distance traveled is the length of a path. So if I want to look at the length of the path for this case, the length of the path, the distance, the distance traveled would be 9 meters. What if the object travels from 2 to negative 7 and then turns around and moves to negative 5? Now, what would the displacement be? The displacement would still be the final position minus the whoops, initial position. And that will be negative 5 minus the initial position 2 and this gives you negative 7. The position has changed from 2 to negative 5. The displacement, the change in position goes from 2 to negative 5 which is 7 meters in the negative x direction. But if I look at the distance traveled the length of the path, this is a zigzag path, that would be 9 plus 2. So the distance traveled is 11 meters. The distance traveled is a length. So the distance traveled is not a vector. But displacement is a vector. It carries a direction. Both displacement and distance traveled would have a standard unit meters. Now let's look at the velocity. We use a little v for velocity. If I put a bar on the top, that means it's an average value. So this will be the average velocity. The average velocity is defined as the changing position divided by the changing time. Speed, some books use V sub S for speed. If I put a bar on the top, again, it is the average value. Average speed is the distance traveled divided by the changing time. Or sometimes we just say time. We use T for time. When we talk about the delta T, of course, as usual, this is the final value minus the initial value. But most of the time, we start our timer at the very beginning. So if your timer starts at zero, then the 
delta t, the change in time, will be the same as the time, the time, the final time or the time at any moment. Okay. So sometimes we don't bother to say delta t, we can just say time, meaning delta t, the time duration for an event. Okay. Now let's look at this example again. Suppose this object moves from 2 to negative 7 in 3 seconds, and then moves from negative 7 to 5 in 6 seconds. Let's see what the average velocity and the average speed of this trip is. The average velocity, do you remember, it is delta x over delta t. The delta x, of course, we found earlier, it's negative 7 meters. The delta t is uh, the time duration of the event. So it's uh, 3 seconds plus 6 seconds. So the average velocity would be negative 7 ninths meters per second. So the unit for at velocity is meters per second. See, average velocity is delta x over delta t. When your view divide by this delta t, it gives you the rate of something. This is the rate of change in position. And this rate of change in position is a negative number. This is number part is the magnitude. The sign gives you the direction because the velocity is a vector. It comes from displacement, which is a vector. So the velocity still has a direction, negative x direction in this case. Now, sometimes people get uh, confused a little about the delta t, because when we do delta t, it's supposed to be final minus initial, so some people may think that this would be, you'll be subtracting two numbers. But in this case, we're adding this because the Suppose you start the timer right here, that's t equals to zero. Three seconds later, your timer would read t equals to three. Six more seconds later, your timer is going to read t equals to nine. Which means when you do the final time minus the initial time, it is going to be nine minus zero. And it's going to give you the same result. This delta t is just the time duration of the event. Okay. Average speed, distance traveled divided by the time. The distance traveled is 11 meters, time is 9 seconds. So it's 11 ninth meters per second. Speed comes from distance traveled, which is a scalar. So what about speed? it will also be a scalar, no direction. Just the magnitude, it tells you how fast, or on average, how fast this object travels. So let's see. Velocity, yes, it is a vector, because it comes from a vector displacement. Velocity has a standard unit of meters per second, so does the speed. But speed is a scalar not a vector. Just a couple more things before we move on. When we use the x-axis as our coordinate system, we are used to using the right as the positive x direction and the left as the negative x direction. So if I'm walking to the left, I would have a leftward velocity, therefore a negative velocity. Traveling in the negative x direction does not necessarily mean that I'm traveling backwards. Because I can certainly just turn around, face the left, and walk forward in the negative x direction. Another thing is that a coordinate system is something we can choose to help us analyze motion. I don't have to make the right as positive. I can choose the left as positive. In that case, I will just have to make the right as negative. Whichever direction you choose to make positive, you will just have to make the opposite direction 
negative. As long as you stay consistent with your choice, things will work out just fine. I will see you in the next video to talk about acceleration.